Welcome to my Soul Series. Soul Series is part of Oprah and Friends, exclusively on XM Radio Channel 156. And you can listen to the entire Soul Series collection on xmradio.com slash Oprah. It's uplifting, enlightening, truly powerful. Welcome to Soul Series. So... Hi, welcome back to our Soul Series. It's another week. We're in the same outfits. <laughs> I love that. Because we just keep taping because our show's a half an hour. Half an hour is never enough. So we always end up talking for at least an hour. In 1999, cultural anthropologist and a practicing psychotherapist, Jenny Phillips, first set foot in the Donaldson Correctional Facility, which is home to some of Alabama's most dangerous criminals and referred to by its residents as the House of Pain. Now, she's done a documentary called The Dama Brothers, East Meets the West in the Deep South, the trailer of which can be found on Oprah.com. It tells a dramatic tale of human potential and transformation as it follows the stories of prison inmates who enter an arduous 10-day meditation program called um, the Pasna. So, Jenny, welcome back. Thank you. And now we're going to put on our headphones, okay? This okay. is the way we do this here. Because we're being joined by uh, by phone uh, are two of the Dama brothers, one of whom is sentenced to three life sentences. The other is serving life without parole. So I heard that there's only one phone in the room to pass between the two of you. Hi. Hi, hi guys. I'm going to start with Ben. Ben, can you pick up the phone? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. I, and they call you OB? Yes. Is it all right if I call you OB? Yes, that's cool. That's cool? Yes. All right. So, first of all, what did how do how do you end up in prison serving three life sentences? What did you do to deserve three life sentences? Um, I got convicted of um committing a murder and three attempted murders. How old were you when this happened? 20. 20 years old. I understand you'd come here as a teenager seeking freedom from civil war and, and violence in Uganda, which was pretty violent at the time. And yes, actually, I came here on political asylum. On political asylum. And you were riding in a car with some, some friends? Yes. And what happened? Um, the shootings occurred, and afterwards I got convicted as the principal because I tried to cover up. You know, and I tried to cover up for, um, for the other guys, and in the process of doing so, I chimed myself up mm-hmm. and ended up with the blame. And, you know. So that was when you were 20 years old? Yes. And you've been in prison now how long? Um, it's gone um, since 1991. 1991. Okay, so if I could add really quickly, that would be... Uh, 17 years. 17 years, that's right. <laughs> 17 years. 17 years in prison. What does 17 years in prison do to your psyche? Well, it's, uh, well, it's terribly difficult in the sense that I want Mrs. Um, Mrs. Family, Mrs. Being able to do um, things freely, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, what do you miss the most? Well, just come out here with the family. Family, you know. Camaraderie with the family. Yes. Mm-hmm. And being able to be there, you know, when people are needy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Are there like physical comforts that you miss? Physical discomforts. Physical comforts that you miss. Um. Yeah. You know, like silence. You know. <laughs> silence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I often think if I got put in prison or had to be in, kept away from the public in any way, I would think I would miss trees. I would miss trees the most. I'd miss grass and trees. Yes, I miss it too. Mm-hmm. I'd miss it too, yes. So what did you think when you first heard that uh, this meditation program was coming to prison? Um, actually, at that time, luckily, I was at a, I was at a crossroads. In, in my own life, I was trying to make some changes, trying to find some, you know, I was challenging my own belief system at that time. So mm-hmm. And what what, right what, what what was your belief system that you were challenging? 
um, the belief system I was telling you was just my way of life. I mean, um, ordinarily we go about based on our conditioning, the things we've learned from childhood or that um, um, our surroundings have taught us, the things we've picked up in school and from our friends mm-hmm. and whatnot. You know, and I was beginning to challenge that because I noticed that in me, as well as in a lot of other people, people who are around me, it just simply wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was beginning to challenge a lot of things and to question a lot of things that I had learned, you know, mm-hmm. that I'd been conditioned to, mm-hmm. conditioned to follow. That was around the same time when the meditation technique um, was introduced to us here. And then I was fortunate to be in the right place at the right time to, to participate in it. I'm talking with OB, he was an inmate from Donaldson Correctional Facility, serving three life sentences. So with three life sentences, there's no chance you're getting out, right? There is a chance, you know, um, pretty meager based on the parole system here, but there's a chance, yes. So have you uh, basically accepted the fact that you're going to be there for life? Not not in that sense, no. I mean, I realize that it's a possibility. It's a very big possibility. Nevertheless, you know, I do have, an, I do have a chance to come for parole. Mm-hmm. Do you think that um, you have, you have been rehabilitated sufficiently to to be placed back into society and be a successful member of society? Yes, I'd say yes. Um, but if I'm going to speak about based on the technique of uh, Vipassana itself, I'll say this here. Um, Vipassana is not a cure-all. Mm-hmm. I mean, it provides a tremendous opportunity for one to grow, to learn, you know, and to for for one to recondition themselves, one might say. Yeah. Nevertheless, you know, it doesn't mean that if somebody takes a vipassana calls, you know, they're gonna be um this saintly person automatically. No. It doesn't no. mean that. Um people still commit blunders. I still commit blunders from time to time. You know, but what the technique has helped me with is to be able to see clearly. That's what vipassana actually means is to see things as they really are, mm-hmm. you know, and um, it's allowed me, given me more options, in other words. So you became a meditating prisoner, mm-hmm. and when the program was first presented to you, so Jenny's here with us now, as you know, and when uh, Jenny and the two men from Vipassana came in and first introduced this whole idea of uh, 10 days sitting on the mats for 10 hours, being uh, removed from the rest of the prison prison population, were you up for it, or did you think, oh, man, what is this? Well, well, I was quite skeptical at first because I thought it was some kind of religion. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to, I was try, at the time, trying to shy away from religion. Yeah. You know, and conversion from one thing to another. I was trying to shy away from all that. So that was where my skepticism came from, mostly. Mm-hmm. You know, and, at the time, too, um, I had no idea how difficult it was going to be, um, which I think is a good thing, because if I knew how difficult it was going to be, I probably would not have participated in it. Yeah, Jenny's laughing <laughs> here now. Yeah. Because how how difficult was it? Can you describe the difficulty? Um, I would say it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And what was so hard about it? Sitting there and dealing with um, dealing with whatever feelings and emotions came up, and not acting outward with them, you know, as opposed to acting outward, it's just sitting there and observing them mm-hmm. without responding to them. Your feelings, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Did you come to terms with the crime that you are uh, serving time for committing? Yes, I think I did. I mean, I. I can't just point blank say I did, but I think I did. And why do you say you think and you can't point blank say you did? Because either you did or you didn't. Well, um, again, nothing is completely in, uh, in black and white. You know, what I mean, right now, I think I can say I think I can say that I am peaceful, and I hope that um, 